I'm sure you'll have you'll have some obstacles. Did you have any issue with the family? Any issue with the previous friends, the career? The well, my previous friends mostly were Muslim. <laughs> okay. So That's, that wasn't that a huge problem. Easy. But I did have colleagues that were women that were not Muslim and they were very upset what happened. But the main problem was family. I mean, my dad is very open-minded and so is my mom, very tolerant. My mom's a refugee from the 1974 Turkish invasion. Mm -hmm. But my sister was in, like, engaged to a Turk for 10 years. I mean, they're very open-minded. But my dad was mostly upset, not because of the cultural change. Yes, my mom was upset because I changed my name, which I shouldn't... What year have. was that, by the way? I this was 2002. Oh, right after 9-11. Now where Islam is really, really yeah, a problem. Course. I yes. mean, come on, where are you going, guys? Eh? Yes. So my dad was upset because he said, why are you going backwards for? The things I taught you was moving away from religion, being progressive, liberal, it's humanist, spiritual. That was his issue. So he was really upset because he was like, all the experiences he had in his life that he learned from, it's as if I threw that in his face. Yeah. And obviously we would argue for the first few years, but it would be like a friendly, loving kind of argument, but it would be intense, it would be very stressful. I think the worst mistakes I did in that period was to basically make up, a, make out as if my dad was incompetent and that he wasn't my hero anymore, because my dad was always my hero and he still is. I mean, his values are phenomenal. He's like a walking Muslim without faith. All he needs is the faith. May Allah like, guide him. I mean, I mean, he recently said that he believes Muhammad is a prophet. Allahu Akbar. So, uh, and he believes God is one. So he's almost there. Well, he's, he's, he's there. He's almost there, inshallah. So, inshallah. I'm sorry. Akhi, this is beautiful. That's what we love, the passion. And, and, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I think the worst thing was and this advice to new Muslims that subconsciously just because you've found the truth you think everyone who loved you is, is baseless now and you want to try and make sure that they're wrong and they're bad and that's what I tried doing with my father because he was a hero to me but he wasn't Muslim and I became Muslim so what do I do with this hero? So I was trying to hack him down basically and I would really make him feel really, really bad or pick the smallest mistakes in his life and make them huge. And I'm a father. If my children did that to me, <laughs> it would be devastating. Of course. You know what? He is a very lucky father. He really is. So I was really bad to him for many years. And I went on this kind of psychology course that makes you realize that makes you realize how bad you are, right? Like, you know, it's your fault, take power in the relationships you have in your life. And I realized that I treated my dad so bad. So I called him up after six years or something being a Muslim. I said, Dad, I need to speak to you. He was in Greece nursing my, 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 great, my, my grandfather. You know, my dad was a very nice guy. He was wiping his backside, changing his, his clothes. And he nursed That's my... A wonderful man. Of course, he, he, nursed, he nursed my granddad for three years. And I never knew he could do it. I was really, 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 really impressed with my father. Because my dad is a very loving guy, but he hates blood and he hates mess. Anyway, so... I said, to, I called my dad. I said, Dad, I want to speak to you. He's like, who, you know, I, I hardly speak to him now right, at that time. He thought something happened to the grandchildren or what's going on. So I said, Dad, I want to let you know that I know you love me. <laughs> I know you love me. And everything you've done is because you love us. Like my dad used to work for 76 hours in a row. He wouldn't eat. He would just drink coffee. He was a laborer. He was in the factories. And he wouldn't eat at all. And he would come back tired and shattered. He had lots of varicose veins because he used to iron clothes as well. So I said, everything you did is because you love us. Even the mistakes you've done. 
And I said to him, you're my hero. You know, he gave all of his inheritance to his brother just to keep his family together. My dad has nothing, zero. But we Muslims don't even do that. As you see, he's a Muslim without knowing exactly. or without adopting the, the faith or yeah. professing the faith. But of now course. you see it. Like my, dad, my dad would stay awake for other people to sleep. He would be po in poverty for other people to... F like he would, make, he would make us eat potatoes for two weeks in order for his workers to have some food. That's how it was. Oh, May Allah bless him. I mean, so I said to him, you're just a great guy. I take my hat off. I said, you're still my hero. We do a different traditions, but you're still my hero. And I love you. And he was crying for 15 minutes. And he does, hardly cries. I've only seen him cry once or twice in, in my life. And then he called my mom up in the evening and he said to my mom that he's ready to die. He felt like a complete parent. Oh. So, but now our relationship is great. I could talk about hadith, Islam. He loves what the Prophet had to say. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam.